what's new about our breast cancer test is that we've really uh, based this on the biology and genomics of, of breast tumors. As it, and, and what we discovered is that's a very powerful predictor of patient outcomes and response to therapies. Our new tests can be used for probably all newly diagnosed breast cancer patients, including both ER positive and ER negative and HER2 positive patients, because our test encompasses this wide variety of, of biologic types, and we believe it can provide important uh, prognostic information for the, for the patient that they can sort of give us a baseline of, of how they might do in the long run. And then it also provides important biologic information, which again could be used to, to help decide which new biologic agents to, to get and, and which not to get. We plan on this test being available uh, this summer, and it will be offered at the, uni at the University of Utah with my colleagues Phil Bernard and Matt Ellis, and also here at UNC uh, with help from our Department of Pathology. This is a very exciting time. It's it's, it's satisfying to see that we can finally take our basic research findings and, and develop them into a test that we believe will help uh, breast cancer patients because we ultimately want our research to uh, benefit uh, uh, cancer patients and improve their outcomes. For breast cancer patients, there already are two genomic tests out there called uh, Oncotype DX and mammoprint. And our test has some uh, similarities to theirs, uh, but also is more uh, broadly applicable and, and, and does have some uh, unique features. All of those tests do uh, baseline prognosis for ER positive patients. Um, but our tests, as well as mammoprint, both do prognosis for ER negative patients. Um, and our test does have some uh, unique data talking about chemotherapy sensitivity uh, uh, for both ER positive and ER negative patients. So many years ago when we uh, designed this test, we designed it such that it would work from materials that are standardly collected in the pathology clinic uh, and standardly collected as part of almost all clinical trials that are run on breast cancer patients. So not only can we use our test on any newly diagnosed patient, but we can also use it on patients who were diagnosed 20 years ago and who are part of existing clinical trials. And so a large part of our current clinical research efforts are to examine older clinical trials with, that addressed important uh, therapeutic questions about the benefit of a specific drug and, and now using our test, we can go back and, and look to see how our different categories, uh, uh, whether they benefited or not from these drugs. So by, by adapting it to the current uh, tissue practices, we're able to go back and, and look at thousands of specimens with decades of follow-up in some cases, which we, we couldn't do using the, the DNA microarrays, which was the original way that we discovered these patterns. Concerning clinical trials, at this point in time, we're mostly doing what we call these retrospective analyses of trials that have already been run. Um, the results are very promising, and we're seeing many uh, correlations between the benefit of certain drugs and, and, and some of the, the, what we call the subtypes that come from our test. Uh, Hopefully in the next year or two, we will begin uh, prospective clinical trials where patients will be selected up front for uh, inclusion into the trial based upon this test. And a trial that we have, uh, that we're trying to design right now or for this is potentially uh, part of the V Foundation collaboration that we have with uh, Joe Nevins at Duke University, uh, where we'll focus on one of the subtypes of our disease and then use additional genomic patterns to make decisions about what drugs uh, uh, the patients might get within one of these subtypes. We would very much like this test to be available to any patient in the United States who, who might want to order it, and so 
our hope is that we could uh, make this test in a format that hospitals could order, say, a, a kit and then run the assay in their own, in their own laboratory. Um, or alternatively, and probably what will happen in the shorter term, is that uh, large reference laboratories, uh, like ARUP laboratories in Salt Lake City, uh, will do the hard work, set up the test, and then you just have to send the sample to them and they will send you back the answer. Our test is really the culmination of almost a decade's worth of work and a partnership between three different universities and three different sets of investigators. Um, you know, much of the discovery work came from the work of my own laboratory here at UNC. Uh, much of the clinical work and clinical implications uh, was the brainchild of Matt Ellis uh, at uh, Washington University in St. Louis, and, and Matt's an oncologist and, 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 and really was a, a driver in, in getting us in the right direction and the right application. And then a lot of the, the technical tour de force was done by Phil Bernard, a uh, molecular pathologist at the University of Utah. And it really took all three of us coming together uh, uh, to produce this, uh, the, the final product.